Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Heading into the month of November, we got to start talking about the college football playoff picture. This BYU team is certainly in that picture. Now, the BYU fans who've been rocking with the boys the last couple of weeks and months, you guys know that I've had some of my questions about this BYU team, how legit they are going to be in 2024. Uh, it is hard to ignore BYU and you got to give them the recognition that they deserve. Now I know there's some BYU fans that want to continue to fly under the radar and kind of have that BYU chip on their shoulder. I don't think that's going to leave this BYU team. You go back to last Saturday, UCF was favorites against BYU over the weekend. BYU rolls want to have the conversation from two different standpoints. One, let's talk about what makes this BYU team so dangerous and special in 2024. And then take a look at the college football playoff picture. Take a look at the rest of the schedule for BYU and kind of start having that conversation of, you know, what does the pathway look like for BYU to get into the college football playoffs, fired up to get into it. Now, before we do an ad, as always, to the BYU fans, it's it, it's been a blast talking to this team. And I've been wrong about this team, and y'all have let me know it in the comment section. And at the end of the day, that, that in my mind is the beauty of college football. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. It's going to be really fun to talk about this team over the next couple of weeks. Without further ado, let's get into this one. And I want to start with just taking a look at some of the body of work up until this point. You take a look at that road win against SMU, 18-15. to 15. You look up and look at SMU and say, that's an SMU team that their only loss on the season is against BYU week, week two. I think the second conversation you got to have is you play Kansas State, the team that I thought was going to be, you know, kind of one of the leaders in the clubhouse to win the Big 12. You didn't just beat Kansas State. You smoked them at home. And so you look at the resume for this BYU team and say, that's two top 25 wins, one of which was on the road, one of which was a blowout at home. This BYU team has quite a resume. Now the conversation is trying to figure out this BYU team, what makes them – so good and so dangerous in 2024. Now, everybody want uh, the, the newcomers to the BYU train. I think they want to start on the defensive side of the football, which is very, very good. And we're going to get there. I'm going to choose to start talking about this BYU offense because this is the unit that I think is starting to find its stride and starts making this BYU team a legit threat in the back half of the season. I want to start with quarterback Jake Retzlaff. We've talked about Jake. He's so fun to watch because this kid is dripping with talent. And we've talked about how he's continuing to balance out. I want to be a difference maker. I want to extend plays. I want to push the ball down the field, but also walk in that line in terms of not putting the ball in harm's way. This is still a young quarterback that is still kind of getting some experience under his belt. It seems like he's making those strides as a quarterback, which for BYU fans should excite you a ton. And you kind of look at the stat line and say, it might not all be – that impressive from a box score standpoint, what a 59% completion percentage. I'm not reading too much into that because they asked Jake Retzlaff to do a lot. They asked him to push the ball down the field. His average depth of targets over 10 yards. And so, yeah, the completion percentage might not be 70% because he's pushing the ball down the field, but this BYU passing attack, it can be explosive. Now, Jake Retzlaff gets a lot of recognition for what he can do as an athlete, extending plays, using his legs, which is certainly a dynamic and part of his game that makes him a tough quarterback to deal with. This kid can sling it, and you see him make some throws that are, for lack of better terms, NFL caliber throws. You take a look at the numbers pushing the football 20-plus yards down the field, 44% completion percentage, 20-plus yards down the field. A phenomenal number. He can also make those those big time game changing throws at the quarterback position for BYU. I don't think enough people recognize uh, how dangerous Jake Retzlaff can be at the quarterback spot. And again, what excites me the most is he's still getting better as a football player as he continues to get that experience. Now, the second thing for BYU that is, you know, kind of starting to excite me is getting the run game going. This was. One of the rocky dynamics of the BYU offense to start the season suffered a lot of really tough injuries at the running back spot. LJ Martin back healthy, difference maker for this BYU offense. You take a look at the last two weeks, I mean, 252 rushing yards against UCF, 
255 rushing yards against Oklahoma State. Back-to-back games with over 250 rushing yards. Why is this such a big story? One, you want to be multidimensional when you're in offense. Yeah, we know we can push the ball down the field and do some things with Jake Retzlaff, but we also want to have the confidence that we can run the football. So that's number one. But I think more importantly, Jake Retzlaff is elite off play action. You take a look at Jake's numbers in play action. The completion percentage goes up to 65%, 11 touchdowns to two interceptions, a 90.9 PFF passing grade off of play action. We all know if you want to run play action, it only works when you can run the football effectively and defenses respect what you can do running the football as BYU continues to get this rushing attack off the ground, which it certainly is going that way. I think the play action aspect of this BYU passing attack is even going to get better. And I think lastly, when you give Jake Retzlaff a run game and say, hey, you don't have to play hero ball all the time for BYU, that's probably going to be the best version of Jake Retzlaff where, hey, he can make some big time throws, but he doesn't need to every single time he touches the football, taking a little pressure off the young quarterback. That's another talking point that I think is going to lead to some improvement for Jake Retzlaff. They've been very good in pass protection, only 52 quarterback pressures. That's an elite number. And you want to see Jake Retzlaff continue to manipulate a pocket and get the ball out quicker. But the offensive line of pass protection has been very good. So you start looking at the offense and say, yeah, everybody wants to talk about this BYU defense, which has been really good. And we're going to get to the BYU defense. This offense averaging 34.3 points per game, a quarterback that is getting better, a rushing attack that is emerging. There's a lot to be excited about in terms of where this BYU offense is going in the back half of 2024. Now you get to the defense. It starts with the secondary. The numbers for this BYU secondary are awfully, awfully impressive. You look at a 52% completion percentage given up. That's number seven in the country, 5.4 yards per pass. That's number four in the country. They had what uh, two big plays they gave up to UCF, which is very uncharacteristic. And this BYU team does not give up explosive passes in the secondary. That's a large part of being a really, really good team on defense. And I think the second storyline is to create turnovers. There are some people in the college football community that think turnovers are an aspect of luck. And there's a certain element where, yeah, at a point it is. But then you look at this BYU team through eight games and say, if you're continuing to force turnovers at the clip, BYU is doing it. At some point, it doesn't just turn into luck. Like At some point, this BYU team is very, very good at getting their hands on footballs and creating game-changing turnovers. I think that's where we're at the point with BYU, where maybe for the first four games of the season, hey, we like the turnovers that you're creating. Is that sustainable? Now that we're through two-thirds of the college football season, you start to realize that, yeah, it probably is pretty sustainable for BYU. I mean, at a certain point when your safeties are the right spot every time, picking off footballs. You can't just chalk that up to luck. You got some ball hawking safeties that know how to get their hands on footballs. These defensive backs in general, which always seem to be in the right place at the right time. It's a very well-coached unit that don't really blow a lot of coverages and get their hands on footballs. They're operating well in the red zone. That's another thing you like. Now, I think the second storyline is, all right, what's, what's the pathway for BYU to get into the college football playoffs? Again, already an impressive resume. You go on the road and beat SMU. You beat Kansas State soundly at home. You're going into a bye week. Then you go on the road at Utah, a team that, like you would ask how this game would go, ask me how this game would have gone three months ago. I would have taken Utah at home by over two touchdowns. Now you look at this football game and look at the trajectory that Utah is going and the trajectory that BYU is going and say, BYU is probably going to win that game. I'd have them as favorites in that football game. You get Kansas at home a team that can be a little bit of a roller coaster, but has struggled in 2024. And that's one of the things that makes BYU pretty special. They ain't no roller coaster. You kind of know what you're going to get from this team. It's a consistent football team that comes out, plays good football every single week. On the road at Arizona State, certainly winnable. Then Houston at home, you're probably favorites in all four of these football games in the back half of the schedule. And then you're going to the Big 12 championship. And that's where BYU has a chance to punch their ticket into the college football plus, not only punch your ticket into the college football plus, but get a buy in the first round of the college football playoffs. That's what excites me the most is at a certain point, like, yeah, we had our doubts about BYU, 
kind of skeptical about just how good is BYU, but when they keep winning football games like this, you, you got to start giving credit where it's due. And I was guilty of it. The BYU fans let me hear in the comment section, which is completely fair, and I love it. I, you you got to give BYU some props. And, hey, I think there's a lot of BYU fans that you probably want to continue to be a little bit disrespected and fly under the radar. I don't think that chip in the locker room is going to change. Like, I think the players remember what the what the media thought of BYU heading into the Big 12 season. I don't think they're going to forget that. I don't think the fans are going to forget that. But right now, I got to get up here and just put my hand up and say, it's BYU team. It's it's the real deal, and it's going to be a really fun month in November for this BYU program. We'll sign out there. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys. We'll talk to y'all later.